You know you've done an intro a lot of times when you've rolled this dice, like so many times. I've gone in in eight. That's a two. Thirteen. Another two. My favorite dice does not like me today. Another two. Why do I keep rolling twos? The odds of that are... I'm rolling this dice again. I have to roll it every time I restart the video. It's a four. This dice is not treating me well. But anyways, hey guys, I'm the Coaster Keat, and today we are talking about luck. Now, a lot of people, when they think about luck, they kind of think of being either lucky or unlucky. Or if you're playing a game with dice, you might think that a certain die is lucky or unlucky. Judging by the numbers of twos that I've gotten and various other numbers below 10, you'd probably think that this dice here, this beautiful amethyst dice, is unlucky because, I mean, how could you roll so many bad things? And if a lot of D&D players will actually roll before a game, and if a dice is rolling low, they won't use it. Well, I'm here to talk about my philosophy, which is a little bit different. Because, you see, while everyone else is rolling at the table, hoping desperately to get, like, 20s or 18s or 17s, I'm over here rolling, hoping that I'm going to get out those 1s and those 2s and those 4s. Like, desperately hoping that I can kind of roll those now in the hopes that I can roll better later. Because I essentially subscribe to this idea that for every 1, there must be a 20. So, some examples, just because, you know. First of all, a D&D &D example. I have a character named Keltina who's supposed to be very intelligent, you know, very book-read, knows her stuff, um, and one day she decided to go to a library and try to look up some stuff that was very important to her, like, monumentally important to her, so important to her, that the DM, the person running the game, told me to roll with advantage. For those that don't know, that's roll twice, take the higher result, and she has a plus 10 to this d20 roll. And I rolled, I believe it was a 1 and a 3 for a total of a 13. And I could just see my DM pulling their hair out because I could not figure out this one basic thing that would have saved so much trouble for everyone, including him. And so, that sucked. But then, but then, a little later down the line in the campaign, when my character was in a situation where she needed to get the most damage possible, where she really needed to teach someone a lesson because they had just messed with her one too many times, that dice came through, and there I got a natural 20, completely blowing a hole in their armor. It was phenomenal. We're just going to gloss over the fact that that was a party member, but it was phenomenal. Um, and so the point being that for every one, there seems to be a 20. Now, if you're not as much of a D&D &D person, I've got some examples for you, too. For every time that you say a brilliant pun or a brilliant play on words or joke or reference and everyone around you laughs, aren't there like a million times where they're either kind of mediocre or like a little good or absolutely bomb to the point where you just kind of look back at that joke and you're like, why did I say that? Why? What was I thinking? Um, if you're, and then another example could be, you know, you're working on assignments and you forget about something and you're like, ah, frick, I, I'm gonna, it's gonna be late, I don't know what to do, and you look at it and you see the deadline's been extended and you're like, my life has been saved, and you kind of rack those up for a little while, if you're me. Um, and then when the time comes for there to be a final assessment, Suddenly, all of that accumulated luck just kind of gets balanced out by the fact that your computer decides that this paper that's due at 11.59 o'clock, it's just not really uploading too well. And, you know, you just kind of watch with terror as that, that needle on the clock just kind of ticks and ticks and ticks. 
And in horror, you watch that 9 turn to a 0 and that 11 turn to a 12 and you just feel your heart sink <laughs> as this assignment that you've worked so hard on and you were going to get it in is now like a few seconds late. Or, you know, you could just be having a really great run with Zoom. Like, you know, you've been d using Zoom for a really long time, and for some reason no one's ever had any technical difficulties, and everything's just going great, and your day's going great, and there's nothing that can stop you from having a wonderful day. So, yeah, as that was a wonderful story, as I was saying. But, um, the point being <laughs> that for everyone in life, there seems to be a 20. Now, I would be lying if I just kind of ended this here and was like, ah, yes, this is what D&D has to teach us about random life and stuff, which, why am I making these videos? I don't know. But anyways, I'd be lying if I stopped there, because D&D doesn't just have straight dice rolls. No, as I mentioned, when Keltina, my character, was trying to remember something, she had a plus 10. And similarly, life has a plus 10. You might have noticed that a fair amount of those things, in fact, all of those things that I referenced for real life, can actually be improved upon. You can add a modifier, as we call it in D&D, &D, to those activities, and you can do a little bit better. For example, the miniature assignments that you keep, you know, pushing back and then you keep getting lucky on. You can have a better schedule. I don't, but you can. You can, you know, write stuff down in a calendar. I don't, but you can. And you can be on top of things. It would be kind of a good idea. Um, if you want to be good at, like, words and you want to be good at making jokes, you can always go ahead and practice in the mirror, or as I do, practice to a captive audience of a bunch of your close friends and random D&D players. Um, and in case of Zoom, I mean, you could always go and get a better internet con connection, which I probably have to do at some point, considering the fact that it froze on me, like, six times on my first day of school, which was fun. But you can do things, right? You can do things to go ahead and add a little bit of a modifier to the various things that you do. And the thing about these modifiers, though, I would be lying again if I said they were just positive because they can absolutely be negative. If you go ahead and you put off assignments endlessly, you're going to have a negative modifier. If you go ahead and you don't really think about what you're saying a lot, you're going to have a negative modifier. If you continue to use the potato-style internet that kind of comes into your apartment, you're going to have a negative modifier. And that's just how it's going to work. So the moral of the story is, I suppose, to kind of go with the flow a bit. Whenever things get bad, you can always kind of count on them getting a little bit better. But you can also count on your own ability to actually affect that outcome. Because we are not just, you know, some sort of slaves to fate. We're people that can shape our own destinies. And I think that's what's truly wonderful about the real world that we live in. So thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you all soar high and enjoy your ride of life. Bye!